Hey everyone, Shannon Fox and you're tuned into Foxy TV. I'm so excited to be coming to you guys today from the Four Seasons at Beverly Hills. I just wrapped up our very first media junket. I had the great pleasure of interviewing Jovan Adepo, who was one of the main characters. He played Corey in the feature film Fences. You guys, I can't wait for you to see this interview. He's an awesome guy doing amazing things and the role that he played was an amazing role. So make sure you guys stay tuned to see our interview and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with us and to find more of our latest uploads. And also don't forget to follow us on all of our social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'll see you guys soon. Shannon Fox and you're watching Foxy TV. Javon, first and foremost, congratulations on your success with this film. Thank I think you. this is an incredible film. I've seen it and I absolutely loved it. I have to ask you, how are you feeling about being a part of something so huge? And not just one, but four nominations with the Academy. Like, how does that make you feel? It's a blessing. It's, it's a definite honor to be a part of this family, you know, who met on Broadway and got to do, you know, this project and this story. 114 performances you know they all spent a lot of time together and you could see upon meeting them that it was it was this fraternity you know this, this tight-knit group Bond. so it was really special for me to be able to find my way and find where I fit in with this family and contribute where they needed me absolutely now something interesting about you is you were actually born in England and mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of people know that so for you what would you say was maybe like a challenge being born in England, but then growing up here in the States and living your life here? Uh, there wasn't much of a challenge. I think it was an advantage if we're, if we're speaking in, uh, in uh, relatively to the film, because I, I was able to relate to mm -hmm. the type of uh, upbringing and the type of family. I think it's, you know, it's easy for, for the, for the African-American mm -hmm. to be able to relate to the Troys and the Bonos, because I have uncles, I got grandpas <laughs> who talk like them, long-winded yeah. at the family reunions and the cookouts. And we all have So those. I think <laughs> if I had spent, right, if I had spent significant time in England, uh, which I'm sure they have something that's similar to that too, and my mom could probably, you know, mm -hmm. testify to it greater, but I think it'd be just a different type of culture. Mm -hmm. uh, for sure it'd be a different type of culture. Absolutely. You know, so it was, I think it was an asset to be, to be raised here, because I was able yeah. to relate to that much easier. So did you ever have an accent or were you here longer? <laughs> did people ask you that? I get that a lot. I, I did not have an accent because I was very little when I came here. So mm -hmm. I would, you know, I would have grew out of it. My mom had it. But then when we moved to the States, we moved from, from uh, London to South Carolina. Okay. So she actually went out of her way to, to learn to speak you know, in an American accent because she was getting picked on a lot by my dad's friend's wives because she was in the military. So They thought she was a little different. She's very self-conscious <laughs> about it. So she speaks like me now. She's very... Yeah. Americanized, but she, you know, she still sounds funny on certain words. But people, <laughs> people ask me that, and when, when they find out that that's, I was born and I don't from. have the accent, they lose all interest in the conversation. <laughs> You're like, no, like, sorry. Oh, we thought you were like Idris, but not <laughs> quite. It's like, oh, okay, sorry. Absolutely. <laughs> now, your background, I know you mentioned earlier, is theater. Mm -hmm. So I know a lot of actors began their careers that way. So right. for you, if any challenges, what would you say has been a challenge for you, maybe crossing over from theater into the big screen? Uh... I would just say it's just a different type of voice that you have. I just think, you know, you're playing out to the crowd when you're on stage. Mm -hmm. uh, I was lucky that I started doing stage work in L.A. And I, was, and I say that because the, the stages aren't nearly as big as if you're, you know, in New York New or if York, you're in England or, or whatever. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a 50-seat theater. So when you're playing out to the crowd, I mean, you're literally playing out to somebody right in front of you. Yeah. But uh, it's still different because, you know, when you're, you're facing the camera and sometimes they would have to get you out of it. So... I was lucky that before I did this film, I had television work too, so I understood the, the importance of hitting your mark mm -hmm. and not looking at the mark and <laughs> trying to, you know, all It's the, very different. It's very different, So, yeah. but I was very fortunate to have a great group of actors on the television show and in Fences, because mm -hmm. I just had a place to look and, mm -hmm. you know, to learn from directly, so I'm very fortunate. Now, your role in Fences, that was a huge role. So what does it take to prepare for a role of that magnitude and even to prepare for the audition? I think the biggest thing is to know the material up and down. I think people who get a chance to to work on August Wilson's work, they're very lucky because he informs you so much about each of the characters. He's very mm -hmm. specific about the type of tone and about the, the cadence and the rhythm that they have in speech and in their behavior and their personality. So all you really have to do is trust the material. Mm -hmm. And then if you're talking about your performance specifically, you really have to try to do your best to season it by creating a life outside of the mm -hmm. outside of the script. You know, there's the stuff that happens before the first page and the stuff that happens at the end of the last page. Right. So you have to be able to tell yourself and to inform yourself about 
what goes on mm -hmm. when you're not on set so that when you come on set and you're doing those scenes it's seasoned and mm -hmm. you've informed different elements of that character's life. Yeah, I love that. Now, before I let you go, you know, you have been so successful, which is very inspiring to a lot of people. And I'm sure there's a lot of young people that are following you, following your work, and desiring to do what you're doing. So what's some words of wisdom or a piece of advice you'd give to them? The biggest thing is to embrace and do their best to enjoy the journey. Because, as they say, it is a marathon, not a sprint. <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, and it's, it's easy to, to, you know, be too hard on yourself about about not getting that big break right away and you know Hollywood or nah, that's not fair to say Hollywood but a lot of people can lead you on to believe that a lot of these actors are overnight successes but mm -hmm. a lot of these actors you know even the young ones yes. are plugging away for years before yeah. they get that big break it's all about laying the groundwork and just just doing the work and pounding away at it so mm -hmm. absolutely takes time. Jovan, thank you so much. Absolutely, likewise. If you guys haven't already, be sure you catch the film Fences, also coming out on DVD March 14th, March 14th. right? Absolutely. <laughs>